So it's surprising to me when I ask people, what is the purpose of LDL? They don't know. They don't understand what it does. They don't understand the basic biology. Even conventional medical doctors oftentimes don't know the main function of LDL. You know, if you buy a car, you're not buying it because it has a rear view mirror, right? The main function of a car is to get you to go some, it's transportation. Uh, the main function of LDL, the main thing that it does, it's a fat transporter. Fats are called lipids in science. It's a lipid transporter. It moves fats through your body, right? So if you have uh, olive oil in a glass of water, it floats on water. Fats float on water. Your blood is like water. It's aqueous. So you can't get fats around your blood unless you have LDL. It's a fat transporter, right? There's no reason to call it bad cholesterol. This idea that LDL is bad cholesterol is complete nonsense. It's literally necessary for life. You need LDL. You need to move fats around your body because a huge amount of your brain is made up of fats. Fats are super important. In fact, in fact, Fats are clean energy, right? Like if your body is burning sugar for energy, that's like a diesel truck. You've got black smoke coming out the back. It's dirty energy. If your body's burning fats for energy, that's very clean energy. It's like a Tesla. This is actually illustrated. There was a guy recently named Alex McDonald, and he's a skinny guy, by the way. He's not like 300 pounds with tons of body fat stored up. He's a lean guy, and he ran five marathons five days in a row with zero food, completely nothing but water for five days, five marathons. And it was really crazy because he'd never run a marathon before in his life. And then he said to train for this marathon, you know how people train by going jogging for one mile and they work up to five miles and they work up to 10 miles. He did none of that. He said to train for this five marathons, five days in a row, he ate zero carbs for six months. That's fat burning, right? You can't run one marathon on a sugar burning diet. If you're eating a bunch of carbs, you can't even finish one marathon because you know, it's such dirty energy. You have to suck down these gel packs of sugar while you're running to finish a single marathon. You can talk to people that run marathons. I do, I talk to people all the time that run marathons. So the point is, right, fats are clean energy and LDL transports them around your system. Now, there's two options. Our metabolisms are very simple. It's not like you have to memorize 50 things. There's two options. Your body either burns sugar or you burn fats. Very simple. Fats are clean energy, but to get them around your system, you have to have LDL. There's the coolest research study, in fact, my favorite medical journal article of all time was published in 2024. It's called Oreo Cookie Treatment lowers LDL more than high intensity statin therapy, right? And what they did in this study is they gave people 12 regular Oreo cookies per day for 16 days, and it decreased their LDL 71%, right? Compared to statins, by the way, which only dropped their LDL 32.5%. Why does it work that way? It's because if you're keto, meaning you're eating a lot of fats, you're burning fats for energy, again, very clean energy, you feel really good, all this sort of thing. Your LDL is nice and high. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm saying it's nice and high, it's a good thing. Of course, doctors are complaining about it, but it's a good thing. Then you shift your metabolism, you start eating a whole bunch of cookies and your body's like, well, we got sugar. Even though sugar is dirty energy, your body will burn sugar for energy because it's fast acting energy. You know, so if you eat a bunch of cookies, your LDL falls through the basement floor Meanwhile, you get diabetes and the doctor at the same time is telling you what a good job you're doing. You see, the point is LDL is good if you're eating a high fat, low carb diet or if you're eating a low carb, relatively low carb diet. You don't have to eat tons of fats, but that's a fat transport. You're burning fats for energy when your LDL is high. The exception is there are problems when people have uh, metabolic syndrome where they have high blood sugar and they have high LDL, that's a problem, right? Because now you have a bunch of sugar in your blood and you have a bunch of LDL transporting fats around your body. That's not a good thing. So there are unique cases where LDL is a problem, but most of the time, the doctors are demonizing LDL because they don't understand what it does. They don't understand the basic biology that it just transports fats around your system and fats are clean energy, right? And a lot of it comes from the pharma companies. They want you to 
buy more drugs. They want a huge population of people. They want to grow the population of people that supposedly have high cholesterol. So they want to tell everybody they have high cholesterol and convince everybody that LDL is bad because it sells more prescription drugs for them. So I hope that clarifies the basic biology of LDL and how good it is for you and how the ranges on that are nonsense on these blood tests. I mean, basically the government, the American medical system is set up to, to give people diabetes. I mean, it's set up to promote a high carb diet, right? Like they're always recommending you eat tons of grains. That's high carb. They're recommending you eat low fat. They recommend you eat low red meat consumption, right? That's just all pushing people towards diabetes and on, honestly less healthy. And of course, testosterone is made from cholesterol, right? So if you get your cholesterol super low, your testosterone generally goes down. There's exceptions, but generally, you know, that's not a good thing. Um, and they're not checking people's testosterone and they should be. And by the way, if you're a woman watching this, your testosterone is super important. You know, women's testosterone is higher throughout their whole life compared to their estrogen. And most people don't know that. So, you know, if you change the units on a blood test and you make the units the same, uh, they, they manipulate the blood test a little bit to confuse people. So they make different units for estrogen and testosterone. But if you, if you make the units the same on the blood test, your estrogen is lower than your testosterone through your whole life uh, with average women, right? So it's, it's, import, it's an important hormone for women. It's important for men. In other words, it's important to have a lot of cholesterol so that you build a lot of good sex hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And by the way, not to disclude the men here, men have progesterone. They think of that as a women's hormone. That's also found in men. It's important for men. So just generally your sex hormones are important. The definition of a sex hormone is a hormone that's made from cholesterol. So you want nice high cholesterol. You don't want high blood sugar and high cholesterol. You want low blood sugar, optimal blood sugar, below 85, optimal. And you want you know, nice high cholesterol, meaning your body's burning fats for energy. That's an indicator you're burning fats for energy. And again, that's a positive thing. So that's called metabolic flexibility, right? When you can burn fats and sugar, you go back and forth, that's metabolic flexibility. If all you can do is burn carbs for energy, burn sugar for energy, that's just really unhealthy for your system. It's not something your ancestors did for thousands of years. Um, Fasting is something your ancestors did for thousands of years. And that's another thing that gets demonized by the modern medical system. And you see this like with the American Heart Association in 2024, March 2024, they literally came out and said that an eight hour feeding window increases your cardiovascular disease death risk by 91%, which is absurd. That, that doesn't even make sense if you just think about it logically. <laughs> like, oh yeah, 91% higher heart attacks if you're fasting, that's nonsense. But they blasted this all over their website, the American Heart Association, heart.org. They blasted this all over the media organizations. Why? Because these big food companies want you to get up in the morning and eat carbs at 6 a.m. And then you're hungry three hours later because your insulin spiked and crashed and you have another meal at 9 a.m. and then you have another meal at noon and you have another meal at 3 p.m. because your insulin spiking and crashing. You have to eat again at 6 and then you have to eat again at 9 p.m. and then you have to eat at midnight sometimes because your blood sugar's on a spike crash routine. And then you end up with pharmaceutical drugs after a couple of years of that. So basically everybody wins except for you and your health. And then the doctors are basically congratulating you on your blood test while you've gotten diabetes through this whole process of following the American Heart Association. You know, they did an actual study. So first of all, that American Heart Association that that headline that was a phone call questionnaire it wasn't published in a peer-reviewed journal it was complete nonsense by the way it doesn't even make sense if you just logically think about it but they blasted that all over the news did you know they actually did a peer-reviewed scientific study that same year 2024 and in a medical journal it's called intermittent fasting and health outcomes an umbrella review of systematic reviews this is a review of reviews meaning they incorporated hundreds of studies in this actual study and what did they find here they find nothing but benefits they find intermittent fasting decreases uh, waist circumference meaning you get skinnier when you intermittent fast it decreases your fat mass it decreases your fasting insulin meaning it helps reverse diabetes benefit 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 
And then you hear, what did, you, what did the American Heart Association say about that study? Nothing. They didn't say anything about that actual peer-reviewed scientific study. Why? Because they have an agenda. It's a corrupt organization. I've talked about it in the past. We have to get rid of the American Heart Association funding. They've done nothing but increase the rates of heart disease in America ever since they started. And it's for reasons like this. They're literally confusing people on purpose and saying LDL is bad, cholesterol and fasting is bad for you and things like this. It's the opposite. Your metabolism needs fats. Your brain needs fats. Your hormones needs your hormones need fats. Fats are good for you. LDL is good for you. You don't want high LDL and high blood sugar. There's a nuance here, but I just want you to understand the basic biology because you're not going to hear it. You don't usually hear things like this because, you know, people like Peter Atia and things are out there confusing everybody, telling everybody the cholesterol is bad and everybody should be zero on their cholesterol and we should put statins in the drinking water. Well, those are the same guys that told you that the COVID vaccine was the greatest invention in the, in the most recent decades. Peter Atia literally said that, right? He thinks the COVID vaccine is amazing. It's so ridiculous. And these companies are so corrupt that um, you have to cut through some of the nonsense sometimes to get to the truth. And that's what I'm trying to do for people. And uh, I hope that helps you understand the topic of cholesterol and a little bit about how LDL works and how it's not bad cholesterol.